each one of us wishes above all to be loved. It might not be something we think about all the time, but it's certainly something that we desire, something that we, we want. We all know what it means to be loved. After um, some time living, we've all experienced uh, the, the, the sensation, if you will, of somebody caring for us, somebody that we can rely on, somebody that we can trust, somebody who wants our good and we can trust them with that. In life, though, however, we often find that the love that we receive from others is somewhat imperfect. It's um, providential that this gospel should come on, on Mother's Day. Often those who show the most perfect love are indeed the mothers, um, not that fathers don't show a lot of love as well, but the, the, the mothers in the sense that they, they give so much in order that we might even exist, let alone that uh, we might be nurtured and nourished as we grow. An unselfish love, you know, if there's anyone we can rely on in our life, it's often our mother. Unfortunately, not everyone has that, that beautiful experience of having a great mother, but for those of us who are fortunate enough to have that, an earthly mother, it is indeed the one, the one person we can rely on is often that woman who is our mother. But God, even if we don't have that, Jesus Christ wants to remind us. He says, you will remain in my love. So even if we've never felt loved, even if at times uh, we're having doubt as to people's true love, their true um, sincere care for us, we know that the love of Christ is indeed with us. But what is love? Well, as probably at least 70 to 80% of all songs ever written will try to tell you what love is or what love is not. But ultimately, what love is, beyond the feelings and the emotions, it is a choice to want what is good for the beloved. You've all heard this, I'm sure, many times. To care for the beloved, to put the beloved before yourself, to give what the beloved needs, and not always what they want. Hence, a good parent will not always give to their children what they want because it's not good for them. But it will always supply what they need. And so it is with God. Because to remain in his love, he asks us to keep his commandments. His commandments give us what we need and keep away from us those things that we may want that are not good for us. The commandments are simple, simply ways to keep us on the right road, to give us peace, to give us joy, to give us the possibility of life to come. <clears throat> Excuse me. But that's all about being loved. That's receiving love from someone else. But there's more than that. First of all, Christ wants us to be sure that we are loved, but then he challenges us to love. We must love. We must we hear at another earlier part in the gospel, Jesus Christ says, you know, that the two commandments, love God above all things, with all your mind, with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your soul, and love your neighbor as yourself. Because we all love ourselves in the sense that we, to give us ourselves what we need, in that sense, not to love yourself in that vain sense, of course. But in this gospel, he ups the ante. He raises the bar, raises the standard of how we are to love one another. It's not just as we love ourselves. We need to love each other as he has loved us, he says. Love one another as I have loved you. And we all know how he's loved us. We just need to look at the crucifix. To that extreme, you might say, and this is a good extreme, we are to love one another, or at least to tend towards that. What does that mean? It means to forget oneself in a healthy way. Again, uh, in, to forget all our selfishness. All those things that, those disordered desires that we want, that, uh, that vanity um, that, we, uh, that we have, the vain glory that we seek in this world, to try to forget all that and concentrate more on what the other needs. Even on those who have done evil to us, our enemies, our persecutors, as Christ says, love them, pray for them. But for man, naturally, that actually isn't possible. It's impossible. How can we love someone 
who's cheated us, who's betrayed us, who's done violence to us or to our families? How is it possible to want good for them? Naturally speaking, it's not. Again, G.K. Chesterton says, Revenge is natural. Forgiveness is divine. Love, in this case, is divine. As St. John, in the second reading today, in his first letter, reminds us, Let us love one another, he says, since love comes from God, and if you don't love one another, you don't know God. The only way we can truly love each other, truly want what is best for one another, is if we have the Spirit of God within us. There's no way we can do it otherwise. And so this is what John is alluding to. When we find it difficult to love, and when we almost find it impossible to love, to want good for another, then we need to turn to God and ask for that grace. It doesn't mean we're necessarily bad people. It just means we're, um, we're normal people, who have, even through a sense of justice. This person doesn't deserve good. Well, that may be the case, but we'll leave that up to God to decide in the end. All he wants us to do is to merit before him by forgetting all that stuff and do as he did and died for us who definitely didn't deserve it. Who of us, who among us is worthy of the blood of God? And yet he died for us anyway. He calls us friends, as he says, and he died for us. What he asks from us is, in comparison, very little, but he understands Also, that it can be extremely difficult to forgive and to love those who have hurt us and uh, uh, and have hurt those whom we love. But it is possible. It is possible. And only love is creative. That beautiful episode, for those who may have read it, of St. Maximilian Kolbe. You know, in the starvation bunker, he was the last one, he wouldn't die. Um... And as the guard came in to poison him, he looked at him with love. The guard apparently says, stop looking at me. But he wouldn't. He loved him. There's your Christ-like love in its extreme, in its, in its um, highest level. That's what we're trying to aim for. And it can be hard. And we give in to, to murmuring and grumbling um, But if we're going to murmur and grumble, let's talk to God about it and ask for the grace to stop that. Let us talk to him about those who annoy us, those who anger us, those who have done injustice towards us, and ask him to bless them and to bless us. And surely then we will be blessed. We love because we have been loved. We give because everything has been given to us and everything we have is not for us to keep. We are here to share the gift that has been given to us. We need to have, therefore, a maternal love for all men. A mother and a father too, who loves their children, loves her children no matter what they do. Will always love their children. Even if they do some terrible crimes or in jail, it's still her son. They'll still want what is best for that son. They'll still hope that that child will turn around one day. We, of course, have that added advantage of having the Heavenly Mother who never gives up on us. Even as the psalm says, even if the mother should forget the baby in the womb, God will never forget us, nor will our Heavenly Mother. She is there to teach us how to love. Can you imagine her son uh, uh, beaten, scourged, crucified, forgotten, forgotten all the good things that he had done, ignored, Did she ever have an ounce of hate towards those who did this to him? We are sure that she did not. All she wanted was for them to love him. And she never stopped loving them. She never stops loving us. Let us imitate her, therefore, in her love of God, first and foremost. Imitate her also in her love for each one of us. She is truly our mother. She is all mercy. And she is the only one that can teach us and can get us this grace, can obtain for us this grace, that we might be what we are supposed to be. Can you imagine a world when everybody forgot about themselves, stopped being selfish and loved one another, wanted only what is best for the other? Can you imagine a world like that? It's possible. Certainly not the world we live in right now, but it's possible. Let us pray that it may be possible, at least in our own homes and in our own hearts, 
so that one soul at a time you may change the world to what it's supposed to be, this antechamber of heaven. That's what we're supposed to be here on earth. And in doing so, we will sanctify ourselves. We will glorify God and contribute to the maximum number of souls going to heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.